the business of being a, a fine artist? How have you found that? Hmm. How do I explain it or how do I feel about it? Both. The business of being a sign artist, um, it's different, you know? I feel like uh, a sign artist, you have the support of a machine, a company that has been in business for years, that has launched other successful artists, and I mean, as an artist, you aspire for that. Um, it's different as an artist taking advice from people who don't know exactly what your vision is and have not locked into your vision but only see it from a business standpoint versus the art standpoint. So I think that um, a lot of problems with artists is they don't connect to the business. So this process for me this year, this past year, has been learning how to balance art and keep it pure, but also the business to where everybody's satisfied and to where you actually make a living off of what you do and what God gave you. So um, it's interesting. I mean, of course, as an artist, you feel like this is my, this is my, this is me, this is my baby, you know? So it's, it's trusting other people to be able to push that vision out and your, and your baby out and, and to get it in front of as many people as possible. So, like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a balance. I mean, when you said earlier about um, it's taking almost 12 years to get to where you are now, so in that time, what were you doing to kind of like maintain yourself? Wow. Um, growing, learning myself in 12 years, I feel like um, getting over insecurities, getting over your voice, learning what your voice is figuring out what you want to talk about, figuring out how to pace your story with your life of how you want to present it to the world. Um, 12 years of failing and winning and failing and doing it again and trying to figure out and meeting people that aren't the right people and connecting to other people who connect you to where you need to be. Um, man, uh, experimenting with sound, experimenting with music, learning what you want to present visually. Uh, man, just so many different things. Growing, traveling, so you can be inspired, so you can gain inspiration, so you can write about more. So I think that that, I've gained a lot of experience in these 12 years to be able to talk about something for the next 10 years. And, and you know, it doesn't stop. You don't just stop growing, stop learning. You keep going, so it's a continuation. I've always wanted to ask these questions to artists. Do you find social media is a bit of a hindrance? Because sometimes people look at how many followers an artist's got to see how successful they may be. So it's like yeah. so many have 100,000 followers as opposed to someone that has 10,000 followers. Do you find the whole thing of having to plug in social media is a bit of a distraction at times? I do actually, man. I feel like um, it's a gift and a curse. I feel like social media is great because it's a faster access to the artist, to the person, to your business, whatever it is that you're presenting. But at the same time, it takes away the mystery. It takes away the... The, I, I want to say respect. It takes away the the authenticity because people they want to see it right now. Like you said, that it's also about likes and it's about um, how many people is, are following you. When it's really and oh, not even that. How many people are following you? How many posts you have to put up? Oh, I have to put up this post to see if this person, so this person knows what I'm doing. You know, and it's it's kind of a cop out because you know. There's so much more, and there are other ways for artists to get their music out there than Instagram, Snapchat. Think about back in the day, how did they promote music if we, there was no Snapchat, there was no Twitter, there was no Instagram, you know? It's like you can't rely on just those things to spread music because you have a certain sector of the world who don't Instagram, who don't Snapchat, who does not, who, who don't get on YouTube, you know what I mean? So how do they reach? How do we reach those people? You know what I mean? And I think that we've kind of gotten lazy with this fast social media and thinking that that is the only way to spread awareness when there's so many other ways. But what are the other ways? Because those seem like to be the only ways that we have nowadays. So I don't know. It's interesting. You were following up on that, then how would you market yourself? Because you spoke about an artist and the business. But then if you were marketing yourself, how would you market yourself to a mass market? To a mass market, man. Uh, it's interesting now. Like I said, nowadays it's harder because you before you had publications, you had street teams, you had trucks, you had people 
passing out CDs. You had people passing out T-shirts. It was like, oh, who is this person? You know what I mean? I remember that back in the day living in New York. You would see like street teams, people pulled over, passing out CDs. Yo, check this out, check this out. And it's not that, it's not like that anymore. It's more so, go check out my Instagram. You know what I mean? When I feel like it's so much more. Uh, there's TV. There's, I don't know. There's, I don't have the answers. If I did, I'd be out here. <laughs> I've been moving forward. Like, when will we get a tour, a solo tour from you? In the a future? solo tour? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, after this Mary J. Blige Maxwell tour. Um, I'm gonna do my own tour at the top of the year. I feel like this is important. This Maxwell and Mary is, it's teaching me um, how to be completely free on stage, how to watch these two amazing artists who've been doing it for years, 20 years, and how to sustain, how to entertain, you know what I mean? Um, so when it goes, I mean, I'm also fan building, building new, exposing myself to people that have never heard of me before, people that probably would have not, never heard of me five years down the line who have now had the opportunity to know that I exist in the world. And that's the most important thing for artists is to be in front of people. So um, it's a blessing, like I said, to be on this tour, but going into my own tour, I'm excited to be able to present my art, to present what I feel best describes me and El Dorado as a project so people can really tap into the album, the vision, what it means, what it feels like, what it sounds like, what it looks like, you know? And kind of running up to this Friday, you'll be performing at O2. Mm -hmm. um, before you go on stage, do you get like nerves and butterflies? You know what's crazy? I didn't really notice that I had nerves because I usually just be like, let's go, let's do it. But I got to pee every time I go. <laughs> every time before I go on stage, I have to go to the bathroom. So I guess that's just nerves. Like, all right, it's time, it's time. But once I step on the stage, it's just like, go. Do you have any rituals, or minus the pee, do you have any like, rituals that you do before you go on stage? <laughs> uh, well, I do, but you can't say it on camera. <laughs> uh, a little shot of Jack. I usually do that with my, with my guy. Um, we uh, elevate, partake in herbal communion. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, just that's it, really. A little ginger. I have some tea or some pineapple juice. Actually, I do pineapple juice every time because it uh it strips the mucus. Yeah, let me see.